These fashions are the creation of designer Vivian Westwood, a leading figure in the punk movement of the 70s. Wild, wild Westwood, she's been called. But Anthony Mason found her today to be a pretty mild, mild Westwood, as you're about to see. Punk was born to be incendiary. Designed to provoke a rebel yell in sound and fashion. In New York this summer, the Costume Institute of the Metropolitan Museum is celebrating punk's legacy. No other countercultural movement, the Met claims, has had a greater influence on fashion. And there would have been no punk look without the lady with the orange hair. I mean, I remember designing some of these things. I remember I was very pleased with the graphics for that one after I worked it out. Uh -huh. In London in the 1970s, Vivian Westwood was the movement's designer and seamstress. I used to make these things. I used to have a pile of muslin uh -huh. and cut them all out together and not waste a scrap of fabric. The guiding spirit of the punk image. Did you mean to be outrageous? No. Um, no, I never, ever tried to shock people. But she did. The best way to confront British society, Westwood once said, was to be as obscene as possible. At the time of punk rock, mm -hmm. I was so outraged at the way the world is so corrupt and mismanaged and everything that the look was supposed to be of an urban gorilla. It was somehow a kind of crusade to challenge the status quo. We took some of the trousers from the rockers, like motorbike things, yeah. and then added some bondage straps to them mm -hmm. and, and started to get a look of like an army thing. Hers was a fashion rebellion made of ripped fabric, safety pins, and S&M gear. All familiar now, but outrageous then. And for many years, the newspapers thought of me as unwearable, nothing to do with fashion. English people are very snobby anyway. They don't like very artistic people to start with. They love me now. At 72, she's now a national treasure. Actress Gwyneth Paltrow wears her clothes. So does Meryl Streep. And in the 2008 film Sex and the City, the character Carrie Bradshaw picks a Vivian Westwood bridal gown. But Westwood, who started out a primary school teacher, never wanted to be a fashion designer. Actually, I started fashion to help my boyfriend. He just needed somebody to help him to make these clothes. And I always could make things. Her boyfriend was Malcolm McLaren, manager of the pioneering punk rock band, The Sex Pistols. Together in the 70s, McLaren and Westwood opened a music and fashion shop on London's King's Road. There's a replica of it at the punk exhibit at the Metropolitan. Does this look pretty close to what it looked like? Uh, yeah, not too bad. Clothes for Heroes was on the door. Yeah, I think that's, that theme runs through my clothes. I mm -hmm. think that's what I would, the mark of it somehow. Mm -hmm. You know, people who want to stand tall. Feels like yesterday in a way. I, I don't know. I, know. I don't think that. Doesn't everybody feel like this about their life? That's somebody else. You know, it happens to be me, but, you know, you, you just, you know, you just move on, don't you? Just turn that around. Let me have another look. Forty years later, Westwood still owns her own company. Wait a minute. Let's just have a look at this. Her fashion empire is headquartered in the Battersea neighborhood of London. This is one of our couture dresses. Where all her designs are brought to life. So this is kind of where you test everything. Yeah, and then when we're satisfied and we really like something, then it is um, sent to Italy or somebody comes here and has a look at it. In her stores, she has 126 now, the Westwood style is still irreverent and uncompromising. Here we have an 18th century corset idea, but it's all done in one go. What made you 
want to bring the corset back? Well, <laughs> this is fashion, isn't it? Um, <laughs> A lot of the time it's a reaction against what is. Mm -hmm. what, where's the space that we haven't been for a long time, you know? Westwood herself is still reacting against what is. You've said to people, stop buying clothes. Yes. Not a lot of fashion designers would be saying that. Mm. I just said recently, I think the Queen should wear her clothes more. She doesn't have to have a new outfit for every occasion. It'd be great to see her in the same thing all week, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love that idea. Um, you were anti-royal once. Yes, I was, definitely. I thought the world was so dreadful, you know, but I don't think it's the fault of the Queen. At one time, I thought of her as the symbol of all our hypocrisy. And I think the Queen is a wonderful asset and it's like social cement. The Queen has returned the compliment. You were made a dame in 2006. Yes. How did you feel about that? You just think, I can't believe it. And of course you think, well, you've got to accept it, otherwise you look like some sort of silly victim. You know, why do you not want to accept it? It almost seems a contradiction, your background in punk mm -hmm. and becoming a dame. It's very great to be honored to be a dame. I think that I deserve to be a dame more than Margaret Thatcher did. I think that I've done more good in the world than she did, for example. <laughs> and that's not the former British Prime Minister. That's Westwood, dressed up as her, for a 1989 April Fool's cover of a British magazine. Oh, that was brilliant. That was really, really great. I was so proud of my acting ability. The former teacher has schooled us to expect the unexpected. The once anti-royal has become Britain's queen of cutting-edge couture. Do you still think of yourself as a rebel? To tell the honest truth, all I really am trying to do is to make the world a better place. We should read more and go to art galleries, Dame Vivian Westwood says. For her, fashion is still about the message, however hard it may be for some of us to hear. I never watched television. I won't take that personally. No, you should stop watching it. Everybody should. 